Okay, well, welcome to Bible study today at First Baptist Church. Very happy to have all of you here, and um, those of you who are, will watch online. Uh, my name is Diane Adams, and we're continuing our study called Pure Joy in the Book of Philippians. Today's passage is important, it's wonderful, and it's very encouraging. It's chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. If we remember our study from last week, chapter 3 contrasts between self-righteousness and Christ-righteousness. Our goal or aim today is to learn that as believers, worrying about the past steals joy from today. So let's begin with prayer. Dear God, we come today to praise you and to learn more about the joy that you so freely offer us. We pray for guidance and wisdom as we study your word. Please show your tender mercy to those who are hurting and suffering. May they feel your presence and peace. Help us to focus our thoughts now so we can understand the scripture and move forward in our life with Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, I read that when Paul um, had been converted, it had been about 25 years, and then he wrote Philippians. And there's no question that he's one of the most outstanding believers of all time. Yet over and over, he tells us that he was still in process. He had not arrived. As Paul neared the end of his life, he wrote to his young apprentice, Timothy, in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have finished the race. Paul's goal was to finish the course and honor the Lord along the way. Several times in the New Testament, the Christian life is pictured as a race. Here's one such passage. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. And Paul often used athletic metaphors to describe the work that he was doing for Christ. Have any of you ever run a race? Well, we know that running a race requires focus, physical exertion, and perseverance. It means you're in it for the long haul. Start to finish, no distractions. You focus on one thing, moving forward and finishing the race. You don't look back, you don't turn around, and most important, you don't quit. So today's passage, chapter 3 in Philippians, verses 12 to 16, and I'm reading from the message. I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made. But I'm well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. So let's keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. 
So Paul's focus was clearly what was ahead, not what was behind. And the resurrected life is the goal that Paul admitted he was pressing toward in his life. He keeps stretching and reaching forward. Sometimes we see some strange things in the sports world regarding athletes' efforts. A University of Oregon runner thought he had the race all locked up. He began to slow down before the finish line, waving to the crowd. He was greeting them and getting them excited about his victory. However, he did not see the University of Washington runner quickly coming up behind him. This runner passed him by and he lost the race. He lost it because he let up at the end. He laid on the track in shock and disbelief, all because he celebrated too early. Occasionally, you may have seen a football player drop the ball before the goal line and begin to celebrate, not realizing that they had not made it all the way into the end zone yet. I think I saw that last year in a game. We too may have the temptation to think that we have attained a goal and begin to celebrate or relax before the goal has actually been achieved. In the first 11 verses of chapter 3 in Philippians, Paul was speaking about the path to Christ's likeness and focusing on what would give the people true salvation, being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. It wasn't about personal achievement. Now he's urging them to focus on the prize to the end, to stay focused. Paul said he was not perfect, and he pressed on toward the goal leading to a deeper relationship with Christ, to be more like Him. He understood that our whole life is a process of becoming more Christ-like. Paul's hope came through trusting in Christ. He set his goal and he pressed forward. What was his reason for doing this? Well, verse 12 tells us, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. That is a powerful, thoughtful motivation. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. We should be honest about where we are in our Christian walk. Paul says he's not perfect and he has a long way to go. We're all struggling with one thing or another. We sometimes look around, and we look at others and think they have it all together. Paul says there's no comparing in this race. In verse 12, he says, I press on. Verse 13, I reach forward. Verse 14, I press toward. His goal is to put off self-righteousness and grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as a lifelong pursuit. Paul is giving us a picture of a runner in a race, every breath straining to reach the goal. It takes a great deal of effort and focus. Verse 13 says, Forgetting the things that are behind. He's talking about not resting on all of his past accomplishments so as not to distract him and slow down his progress. In verse 15, Paul speaks about maturity, which is not perfection. They're not the same thing. Maturity is growing, learning, forgetting the past, and striving to what is ahead. Maybe it would help to get in the habit of asking ourselves frequently these questions. Why did Jesus save me? What was his purpose in laying hold of me? What does he want me to accomplish with my life? Why did he gift me in the way he has? Why has he put me in this place? 
Why has he given me these opportunities? Why has he given me these trials? And then perhaps the biggest question, how am I doing? Imagine if an employer said, I'm hiring you to do such and such, but you have a choice to the degree to which you're going to accomplish the purpose for which I hired you. It's amazing that God would save us and then give us a choice in the matter when it comes to the degree to which we will press on to accomplish the goal. He doesn't give us yearly evaluations or hold the possibility of losing our salvation to motivate us. We should hold on to the progress we've already made, not look back, press on, keep reaching for Christ, even as the world tries to pull us away. Sometimes we may feel weary and tired and frustrated like we have a long way to go. No one has it all together. Even Paul, though mature, was an ordinary human, and he still had a long way to go. He knew he had not reached perfection, and he would not reach it in this life, yet he kept pressing on. We must remember we are to live in the present, looking forward to the future. If we look in the past, there's a danger of becoming complacent, apathetic, or passive. If we look at the positive things of the past, sometimes it's easy to rest on our laurels and conclude that we've done enough and stop pressing on. We can recognize the areas where we need to grow and put maximum effort to move forward to become more Christ-like. Forget what lies behind. This doesn't mean that Paul totally forgot everything that was in his past. Many people live with unpleasant memories. Paul's past included the persecution of Christians, including the martyrdom of Stephen, as told in Acts. Even though it was sinful and not good, it wasn't what he focused on. Remember, God is in the process of redeeming us completely. Past events can work to motivate us toward Christ and service to him. But if we keep looking back, we will never go forward. It's all about perseverance and purposeful living. Jesus transformed Paul on the road to Damascus, and he called him into ministry. But Paul's journey was still incomplete. Like ours, he had not yet arrived. One thing he had going for him, he had no illusion of perfection. He adequately assessed his true condition. He's pressing on. <clears throat> Christ laid hold of him, as the scripture says. Laid hold of him means to apprehend or seize something after a pursuit. Christ pursued Paul, and then Paul pursued Christ. Jesus laid hold of him to make him a new man. Why? Well, here are some of the reasons to conform him into the image of Jesus Christ, to make him a witness, to make him an instrument of conversion for others, to bring him into suffering and to understand Jesus' suffering. He did it so Paul would have heavenly hope, so he would have joy now and forever. The prize is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, working with God as his partner to do the work of his kingdom. There's a section for us in the study guide that you might have seen about setting and evaluating goals. It's on page 84. 
It says, Paul spoke to, of continuing to strive toward goals. He had not reached perfection, nor have we. Instead, we press on toward the higher calling of Christ. So here's some things to consider when we set our own personal goals. Is it specific? Is it well-defined? Is it measurable? Is it realistic? Is it something I can really do? Is it achievable? Is it beneficial? Is it reviewable? And is it accountable? This seems so in line with the discipleship coaching that's available at First Baptist Church Gainesville. It's a way to achieve personal growth in our trellis ministry. Three questions to ask ourselves. One, what goals are you setting in your Christian life right now? Number two, what is Christ calling you to do in the near future? And number three, how can you press into new opportunities? The study guide also suggests some practical applications when thinking about those questions. It says to look for relevant struggles in your community to show the love of Christ. Where are people needing help around us? To look directly at our church's ministries and to join in to be a part of it. So in coming to closure, Paul looks forward to his future and hope. Christians must keep their eyes on heaven. And not just thinking about having no more tears, walking on streets of gold, eating good food, riding on the clouds. All those things sound wonderful. But the heavenly prize Paul is speaking of is knowing Christ fully. The prize is Christ. The prize is being with the Lord eternally in heaven's joy. And just as we have this prize waiting for us, we have a calling in life right now. A call to worship, fellowship, ministry, studying God's word, and generosity. There's a movie made in 1981, Chariots of Fire. It dealt with Christian missionary Eric Liddell and his participation in the Olympic Games in Paris in 1924. In that movie, one of the athletes hires a personal trainer. In one of the races, this runner comes close but doesn't win. The trainer shows him a picture of the finish, which shows why he lost. He took his eyes off the finish line, and he looked to the side at the other runner. In our Christian walk, we need to look ahead toward the finish line, not to the back or to the sides. Every Christian has a race to run. Each race is filled with hills, hurdles, curves, potholes, and other challenges. Focus on the finish line. Pressing on is the way to achieve great joy in this life and the one to come. We long for the day when we celebrate around the throne for eternity and hope to hear the Master say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's pray. Dear God, we are all in a race, and each person's race is different. Help us to stay focused, to not look around to see what other runners are doing but to keep our eyes on the finish line. We rejoice in this day of life and in the hope of one day relaxing in a perfect place in the presence of Jesus. We pray to trust and move forward in our Christian walk 
and to recognize today areas where we can grow. Thank you for the life of Paul and his encouraging message of joy with Christ. Lead us now into the coming week to take the love of God and to share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.